So today we're here to talk a little bit about diesel fuel, uh, diesel fuel with biodiesel blends, and how water behaves in fuel. Uh, it's very relevant because of the increased use of biodiesel and how differently water behaves in biodiesel blends as opposed to straight diesel fuel. So what we have here are two samples, one a number two diesel fuel sample, and this is a B20 blend. Um, and what we have is water that's been added to the samples. And what I want to show you here is you can see here in the diesel sample that the water is clearly a separate fraction at the bottom. The top fuel is quite clear. You can see the numbers through there. The water that's been added to the biodiesel blend, there's a little bit of a layer here, but a lot of the water stays up in suspension. If I give these a shake, you'll see how quickly the water begins to settle out from the number two diesel fraction, but it does not settle out in the B20 blend. And this is a problem because most of the methods for detecting water traditionally have been for detecting what we call water bottoms. It picks up when we start to get water building up in this fraction at the bottom of the tank, and that has worked fairly well. The problem now is that with any place where there's blends, especially states that have uh, mandated biodiesel blends, even B5, B20, the, fuel, the water stays suspended up in the fuel and it does not separate out like that. And so methods that have detected water bottoms are not effective for picking up water in biodiesel blends. That is why we need a test for doing that. The fleet fuel testing water test does detect entrained and suspended water and it detects it in the roughly 100 parts per million range. The ASTM standard for diesel and biodiesel is 500 parts per million. So we've looked at examples of water and fuel, both straight number two diesel fuel and in a biodiesel blend. So where does the water come from? Water is introduced into fuel all throughout the supply chain from immediately at post-production to the distribution tanks at, at distributors. It can be introduced at the terminal and the rack. The jobbers that deliver fuel, water can be introduced there and it can be introduced through condensation and other methods in the vehicle tank itself. You can go to Exxon's website, the Engine Manufacturers Association, many different sources and they'll talk about all the different places that water can become introduced into fuel. So it's out there, water is in fuel. And why do we care? We care because water is arguably the most destructive contaminant in fuel. It causes many direct problems, uh, including severe consequences such as blown injector tips where the water turns to steam and explodes the injector. It can change the viscosity of fuel, which can stress injection pumps, all of these leading to expensive repairs. It corrodes metals, leading to premature wear of engines. It supports microbial growth, so you have yeast and mold and bacteria potentially growing in the fuel and clogging filters and breaking down fuel prematurely, which leads to higher acid, which has a whole other host of problems. So water causes a lot of problems in fuel. What is very important then is to know when it's there so you can take the appropriate action before it leads to very expensive repair and damage to engines. At Fleet Fuel Testing, we've developed a water test that will detect entrained and suspended water at levels below the ASTM standards of 500 parts per million. For more information about our test and for a video demonstration, please go to our website at www.fleetfueltesting.com.